Um, if we start thinking about, we already have talked about um, using uh, what an ASBV or an Australian sheep breeding value is and an index. Uh, so now how do, can we use that information to then make ram selection decisions? So if we think about the role of genetics, um, what we're essentially doing is taking energy, um, uh, transferring that into our sheep and then producing a product coming out the other end. If we have better genetics on board, the way that we do that in a productive and an efficient manner is going to be better and the product that we're getting out the end is closer to what we're trying to achieve. So the basics haven't changed. Um, as much as ever before, we need to make sure that the ram looks right and it's going to do its job out in the paddock. Um, so this includes looking at um, sound structure, making sure that the animal is suitable for the environment that we run in, um, and then making sure that our wool quality is fit for purpose. So um, making sure that the ram has a leg on each corner and is able to, going to be able to do the job out in the paddock um, and do it in the environment that we're running in. So if we think about what impacts an animal's performance, we know that there are a number of things that um, will impact how an animal is going to perform. So we think about um, feed, age, if it's a single or a twin, um, ha what the dam age was, whether it is immunocompromised, but then also we know that its genetic performance is going to impact its overall performance. So how do we account for some of these things in the analysis? Um, well, there are a number of fixed effects that we make adjustments for. So we make pre-adjustments for the age of the animal, the age of the dam, uh, its birth type and rear type and its live weight. Uh, and then we also use contemporary groups uh, to separate out from breed, uh, the flock that the animal's running in, the year it was born, its sex, the management group that was supplied by the ram breeder uh, and the date of measurement that animal was measured on. And these groups are maintained through life. So we'll only ever compare contemporaries that have been run under the same conditions together. And then we also uh, slice for age differences so that we're accounting for seasonality across the lambing period. So how important is it that we account for some of these things? Age, uh, difference in age can account for 6 to 7% of the raw variation for a post weaning weight. Uh, the age of the dam uh, can account for 1 to 2% uh, for birth weight and post weaning weight. Birth and rearing type uh, can account for 5% difference uh, for weight traits. And contemporary group can account for 45 to 75% of the variation. So if we don't have the right contemporary group or uh, know how those animals have been run, we can be uh, missing out on accounting for some of that variation in their performance. Here we have an example of linkage. So we have um, three different properties, A, B and C, and we have three different rams on these different properties. So in property B, it looks like the blue ram's progeny are performing um, uh, the, better than the, re the other two properties. But how do we know whether this is actually due to the environment or due to their genetics? So if we have um, a common ram or the pink ram in this example, uh, we can then use this ram to then compare how those progeny perform um, and have common genes across each of these different properties. So now we can see that on property A, um, those progeny are performing one kilo better than the average of the pink ram's progeny. Uh, on property B, uh, the, the blue ram is actually, his progeny are performing three kilos less than the average of the progeny from the pink ram. And on property C, uh, the, the red ram's progeny are performing five kilos better than uh, the link ram. So we can then use that, at, that link ram or that pink ram as a benchmark to then compare how those progeny are performing across all of those different properties. So some of the practical considerations um, to help with uh, making sure we have adequate linkage that we can account for those environmental differences is to use sires from outside flocks. Um, participating in young sire programs, there are a number of groups running where rams can be shared across different properties. Uh, entering sires into a central progeny test or the uh, resource flock uh, and then ensuring that um, the link size that we actually select have adequate pro progeny numbers and they are being measured for the traits we're interested in on other properties. Um, dams, if we're identifying dams, this also helps with linkage over time. However, it's only by a small amount. Um, and also linkage uh, isn't accounted for in our own management groups on our property. So when we're thinking about splitting up our sheep, we need to make sure that we have common genes across each of our management groups on farm. 
So when uh, we group, have management groups on a property, uh, the purpose of doing this is to make sure that we're comparing apples with apples. Um, if we have ma uh, managed animals separately, we need to make sure that we group them into different groups. Uh, and this is ensuring that our data is accurate and that we're co effectively comparing the right animals to each other. Uh, we can identify groups from birth and any time after that. So every group, will, every animal will be given a group at birth. And then if we separate those animals up over time, they'll be given a subgroup uh, across their lifetime. So a management group is a group that is defined by the user um, and it's defined from birth and onwards. However, a contemporary group is what we, give, what we end up giving the animal in the analysis. So we also make a few uh, adjustments within the analysis to make sure that all animals are being compared in the right contemporary group to make sure that we have effective data. Um, so management groups is what the user defines and then we then use that information to create contemporary groups within the analysis. So if we're thinking about what breeding values we should focus on for our RAM selection decision, decisions, it depends on our breeding program. So what animals we're running, what is our base use, what, are our production, what is our production system and our environment that we're in, and then also what is our target market. So we need to know what are our profit drivers and where our money is coming from. So for example, if I'm a dual purpose merino, what proportion of my profit is coming from meat and what proportion is coming from wool. So this is just an example of some of the different profit drivers across two businesses. Uh, in the top corner, we would have a fleece production business, so my profit would be driven by fleece traits. And then as we move down to um, more of a self-replacing um, shedding flock that where wool isn't important, our profit drivers will change, so our focus will be more on fertility and carcass traits. So if we think about a lamb production system, some of the three major traits we would be most interested in uh, that's impacting profit would be growth, um, f fat and eye muscle. However, there are also other traits that will be impacting our production system. If we're running in a different environment, um, we'd be concerned about uh, worm egg count, for example. And then if we're a self-replacing flock, we'd also be interested in fertility along the lines as well. For a wool production system, the focus may slightly change. So we're more interested in um, fleece traits, so fibre uh, fiber diameter, fleece weight, and then also considering other things that might influence our profit, so muscle and fat, worm egg count, if that's the, uh, important to the production system we're running in, and then also um, fertility as well. So if we're a commercial producer and we're thinking about um, the genes coming into our business, we need to make sure that we're focusing on traits that are uh, important to our breeding program, and then how are we going to get those genes flowing through our flock faster? So for our rams, uh, making sure that we're selecting animals with breeding values and on, based on index that suit our breeding objective, uh, selecting um, rams with the best breeding values um, possible that are also functional, so still making sure that they're structurally sound. And then it's also good to do a ram audit, so making sure that we're looking at reviewing our size that we're using and, and making sure that every year we're making improved selection decisions. Um, and that we're making sure that gene turnover is, it, we're, make, we're making more gene flow, uh, gene turnover within our flock uh, quicker. Also, not to forget about the ewe portion because they're still 50% of what we're passing on to our progeny. So how are we focusing on how we're selecting our replacement females? Are we only doing it visually or are we making um, a more knowledgeable decision? So are we basing this on some records? Um, in Merinos, we can actually do ram power runs. Um, and then, or are we just selecting singles versus twins? Um, and so are we culling based on age for them to exit the system? Or actually, are we focusing on their performance within our flock to then make our selection decisions on our females? Clara, as a ram breeder, what are some of the key steps I should take to get started if using ASBVs? Yep, so uh, the first thing to do would be to um, look at what your uh, breeding program is and what traits um, are, suit you, and then start to record those traits so that you have records on those animals. Um, and then engage with either a service provider or contact Sheep Genetics, and then we can work on getting the structure of the data right to then start submitting it to us. As a commercial RAM buyer, should I be concerned about accuracy? 
Yep, so we have uh, accuracy thresholds. So any breeding value that is reported as an ASBV has met those accuracy thresholds. So we compare all animals in the same analysis. Um, so if we're looking at a RAM catalogue, we should be more concerned about the breeding values of individual animals um, because they, they have met the accuracy thresholds to have a breeding value reported. Um, and it's also important to note that if you're selecting a RAM team, uh, based on breeding values, the accuracy of that RAM team um, won't, won't, won't change all that much because you've selected a number of animals to use in your commercial system.